Yeah, really good practice. Um, I thought that um, we had good energy and good focus, and I, I feel like our team is continuing to to show the maturity that that we're hoping for this year, and that is one that that every week feels like that game is the most important game of the year because it is. Um, so I felt good about it, and I think we're we're in position um, uh, to have another good week, and about where I'd expect to be on a Wednesday. Perfect. Uh, we'll start a question from Jared Lloyd, uh, Daily Herald. Hey, Jeff. We talked earlier to Tyler, and and uh, looks like we'll be talking to Shione today. When you have a group of guys that that can kind of work together, like Tyler and Peeney and and now Shione joining that mix, Miles, what's that like? Because guys are, you know, they're competitors. They want to be on the field, but at the same point, you know, that they know that other guys are talented. What's it like working with a group like that? Um, you know, on a really good team, that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, when when I've been on on good teams, there's a there's a healthy competition between guys at the same position, and at times there there's probably some private resentment towards another player that might be playing a little bit more than you are. But ultimately, we're all in it for the good of the team. And I think our guys have, have shown that they're, that they're willing, willing to show up and work hard every day, whether they're, whether they're getting a few reps or a lot. And one of the things that I say to guys that may not be getting as many reps as they want is that um, you have to not count your reps, but make your, make your reps count. And we, we've got a few guys that fall into that category right now. But I'm, I'm pleased with the direction that we're headed there at, at running back and, and Tyler and Peeney continue um, to be the top two guys and really pleased with the way that they ran, uh, especially with a, with a physical nature to the finish of their runs in this last game. I also wanted to ask about efficiency. I mean, you score touchdowns on six of your first seven drives. The only one that isn't is that bad snap. And, and then second half, you know, not, not the same level of success as you kind of, you know, shuffled in a lot of guys. How do you balance those things and just looking at the efficiency of the offense? Well, um, you certainly would like to be able to continue with that the rest of the time. Um, but it's an opportunity for young guys to learn. And it's also an opportunity for you as a coach to maybe point out to somebody, this is why you are a backup. This is why you're not getting more playing time. And I, I felt like that was, that was um, an, an obvious um, sign of that with certain guys. And so I, I would love to be able to continue the type of production that, that we start with. Um, but often that's not the case. However, the expectation is the same. And so we, we need some of those guys to step up. And I talked to them after the game about how, how often you may not realize that you're just a player or two away from being in the game more frequently. And so hopefully those guys will learn from that experience. Okay, any other questions for Coach? I've got another one, Jeff, if you – if nobody else is, is asking, I'll grab it. I'll grab you for another one. I wanted to ask about big picture. Um, this team has obviously emphasized that whether you're a walk-on or a preferred walk-on or a scholarship guy or, you know, one, two, three, four, five star, it's going to come in and you're going to have to earn your, earn your, um, your, earn your opportunities. Is that the same approach that you've seen at most places that you've been, or is it different at different places as far as how they handle the difference between, you know, highly recruited guys and walk-ons and those types of things? I just wonder what that, that difference is like. Um, you know, I, I, I think there are two factors there. One, I would say that um, as coaches, our jobs depend on playing the best players and, and, um, producing players at, at our position and on our side of the ball. And so I think everywhere that I've been, coaches are certainly committed to playing the best players and developing their talent, whether a guy is a five-star, a two-star, or, or a, a walk-on no-star. And so I, I don't think that's different from place to place. I think what's a little bit different here is the quality of some of the walk-ons that we get uh, being a little bit closer to some of the guys that are on scholarship. I think we have um, two things going for us in that regard. One, obviously, is the connection to the church and a lot of players who would who would choose to come here and play at BYU. Maybe they've grown up 
uh, a BYU fan their entire lives, and maybe they have some offers from other places, but would still choose to come here and walk on and attempt to prove themselves over maybe an offer somewhere else. And so I, I think we've done well with with those kind of guys. And if you, if you look at some of the guys that are that are producing for us, I think you can certainly see that. And then I think we've also done a good job of identifying some of that local talent and going out and grabbing some of those guys and convincing them that this would be a good opportunity for them and they'll have a chance to to earn a scholarship. Uh, Jeff, also, oh, the, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon. No. no. Uh, Jeff, I, I was just going to ask, um, you know, with, with Zach Wilson, I know you get bothered about him, about him a lot, but I'm working on a story about him. And, you know, across the college landscape, there's, you know, a lot of focus on Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones at Alabama. But in, in your eyes, what makes Zach different on the field than, say, maybe some quarterbacks you've seen over the years, whether you've coached them or not? Um. Well, I think one is is just his his arm talent. You know, um, a lot of guys don't have the ability to push the ball the way that he does. And you know, a, a lot of people talk about the the long throws and and you know the long throws. A lot of people can throw a ball a long way. Um, being able to throw a ball a long way to a place that only your guy can catch it is something different. Something even harder for most guys to do is to be able to drive the ball across the field on an out route or a comeback. And a lot of guys just don't have the the zip in their arm to make that happen. And so he's, you know, you, you hear it said all the time about quarterbacks, he can make all the throws. I honestly haven't been around a lot of quarterbacks who can make all the throws. And then I've been around a few quarterbacks who could make all the throws physically, but they couldn't figure out which guy to throw it to. And Zach's incredibly intelligent and uh, his mind works really fast and just sees things on the field um, in, in a way that, that I think very few guys do. And then I would say on top of that is just his passion for the game. That passion for the game drives him to really, really work hard at it. Um, I was I was texting with him last night and I was, I was watching some of the third down cut-ups and kind of expected him to be doing the same thing and he's watching the bachelorette so i gave him a hard time about that because it's unusual for me to find him not watching film when i text him and i'm watching film but i was talking to him about something and he goes oh but be sure coach i'm gonna watch some film after this but he is he's a he's a film junkie and he's that way because he loves the game and so his love for the game and his passion for being great drives him to study film and work at it in such a way that his that his arm talent and his brain pay off on the field. I know, you know, for a lot of the country, you know, Big Ten just started football up. Pac-12 is yet to start up. So there hasn't a lot been a lot of, like, Heisman talk. And I know some people might be superstitious to even bring that up. But in your opinion, just what you've seen out of Zach, do you, do you think people need to take him more seriously for the Heisman Trophy this year than what they are? Um, I can't answer that because I don't know how seriously people are taking him. Um, but I will just say I think it would be really hard to find um, to find three or four or five guys who are, who are doing better than he is. And, and obviously the season is not over yet. Um, but I would say based on the body of his work at this point, yeah, they, they should be taking him seriously. And um, – I've only been around one other quarterback who who had a season like he's having, and that guy won the Heisman. So, um, I think he's certainly, I think he's certainly in the conversation. Thank you. Hey, I think we're good, Coach. Unless anyone else has one last question for anybody else, Jeff. I was just going to ask about Western Kentucky. Just what have you seen from their defense? Um, a very aggressive team, particularly in the secondary. Their coverage scheme is very similar to Houston. Um, a lot of man, and even when it's not man, and it looks like like too high where you have an, an open middle of the field, often the way they play it, it's really still man, and they free their their safeties up to be really aggressive in the run. And so they, they work really hard to, um, to be aggressive in their coverage and force you to make the tough throws. Some of those, um, some of those 
contested catches that we made against Houston. I suspect we'll be in the position again where we have to make a lot of those those tough throws and catches. Um, they've got a couple of uh, uh, speed guys who can rush the quarterback and give you a lot of complex blitz patterns on third downs. It seems like every third down they line up in a different front and give you a different four or five man rush pattern, but really, really aggressive, very confident in their ability to cover and a lot of man in the back end. And so it'll be, it'll be a great challenge for us to run the football because of the, the numbers that they commit to stopping the run and then a challenge to throw it because of the tight man coverage that they play. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, right. hold on, uh, Jay. Do you have a quick question? Yeah, another. Coach? Sorry, one more. That's okay. Sorry, I, ju I just came in late. I don't know if you've been asked. About oh, wait, it's for Jay. No, never mind. <laughs> no, go ahead, Jay. I just was. If you've been asked this, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Hank Tua Piloto finally coming back. How gratifying was that? And what what maybe skill set does he add to the group that you are? Yeah, I'm glad you. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, Jay. I'm really, really pleased with Hank. He's um, he's a great kid, and he's worked really hard. And, gosh, I felt so bad for him last year when that injury happened again. Um, but he's a he's an excellent athlete. Um, like, like some other guys I've seen at tight end, not the most physically imposing guy. You know, he's not the biggest guy that you would see, not the longest guy, but he's just a good athlete. He just has really good feet, has good spatial awareness, and, uh, and has really good soft hands. And so he's a guy that I could see continuing to build his rep count as the season progresses.